Okay, so you start fucking with Funk Volume. So you sign to, to Funk Volume, and now Hobson was already buzzing at this time, or is this still kind of early? Yeah, yeah, Hobson was doing his thing. He was on the Raw tour when I was uh, checking him out. Okay, who else was on the label? Just Swizz. It was just Dame, Hobson, and Swizz. That's it. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So how was that experience initially? Um, it was crazy because like I was what I was doing on a very very small scale in Vegas or what I was trying to do uh, They were doing it on a very small scale But in a major way, you know what I mean? Like they had boxes of CDs boxes of merchandise They were shipping everything from their crib like when I went out they had a room full of funk volume merchandise like when I first went out there to meet them I was able to leave with like funk volume shirts and hats and shit and like, they had everything organized. It was a business, you know what I mean? On a very small scale. And like, yeah, it was just what I was doing. To me, it was like the way that I wanted to do things. It was so major to me. It was just major to me how they were doing it. Yeah, no, I've interviewed both these guys. I've interviewed both Damien and Hobson. And, and both those guys were serious about running this operation. This wasn't just, you know, two guys fucking around and seeing what happens. Like, they actually sat there and ran it like a business. Yeah. So, how long were you at Funk Volume altogether? Um, I was in Funk Volume for four years. Okay. During those four years, what do you think were your greatest experiences? Uh, traveling, traveling the world, performing. Um, getting with Funk Volume gave me the opportunity for people all over the world to hear me because Hobson had went out there and planted those seeds. So um, I was able to run around with Hop at some of his shows and just try to win the fans over, win the crowds over. And, you know, it was like I was being put to the test a little bit. And um, nobody could save you but you. You got to go out there and you got to do the job. And I felt like, um, yeah, man. So I think just it, it introducing me to being able to perform and travel and talk my shit in front of people all over the world, um, that was the kick. Now, how was the relationship between Hobson and Damien from your point of view during the time you were there? Uh, it was cool. It was cool. Um, I never had like business conversations with, with Hobson, only with Dame. Um, Dame kind of handled the business the shit, and Hobson, you know, was Hobson. And um, the relationship was cool, though. At what point did you start seeing some problems start to happen, though, within the label? Um, it wasn't until the, the, the FV 2015 tour. Yeah, the last tour that we went on. Okay, now before then, you guys had signed to Warner, right? Yeah, we were still signed to Warner. Yeah, yeah. We were still signed to Warner on that tour. You know, that, that tour um, had, had a lot to do with the lack of what we felt like we were getting from Warner. I ain't had no expectations, you feel me? Um, I, did, I did think that uh, things would step up a little bit, but I ain't really had no major expectations. But um, I definitely thought things would step up. Um, and that's just me speaking for myself. Now for Hobson, I thought things were gonna change for show for him, because he was already, you know, he's doing a million views a day, you know, four or five days in a row, five million views in a week. I don't care who you are, that's insane. You know what I mean? So I thought that he would get the late night shows. I thought that no matter what he did this year, that they would maximize that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it just didn't happen that way. So at one point, Damien Hobson started to really not get along with each other and kind of start the whole split. Like when you saw that happening, like what was your thoughts? Um, Hobson was upset on tour because he felt like Warner wasn't giving them, wasn't putting up, putting forth their best foot towards, you know, us getting to where we needed to be. And that's when I started to see the problems. You know what I mean? It, it was kind of like, 
I felt like Hobson kind of um, didn't understand how Dame could let us get in this position. You know what I mean? And Dame was just kind of like, I didn't put you in this position. I thought the same shit you thought. And um, that's kind of just the, the miscommunication is that's when I started to see it. Okay. When it was finally announced that they're splitting up, uh, how did you take it? Uh, yeah, I was mad because uh, we, we had a phone conversation. We were all on the phone. And um, I was like mediating the phone conversation. And uh, yeah, Dame said that Hobson didn't work hard. You know, and I had already talked to Dame prior to the conversation and told him to never say that again. <laughs> you know what I mean? I told him to never say that again. So the fact that he said it again, um, I was on the phone chewing Dame out when Hobson made the post. And I didn't even know he made the post. So when I seen the post, I was just real upset. You know what I mean? And the post said what? Uh, something, something about the death of funk volume or some shit. And uh, something about Dame being the death of funk volume or some shit. It was something like that. Um, and he was just saying like how you gotta go a separate way or something. And I don't know, it was just some crazy quick shit. Well, I mean, people get into arguments all the time, you know, when they work together, especially in, in something like this. Was there any chance of them actually working it out before it actually just completely fell apart? You know, especially, you know, especially with you trying to mediate it? That was the chance. Hobson had Hobson had uh, <laughs> Hobson had Dame blocked for a long time. Like we, if you go back and look at the dates, you will know that we went on the Funk Volume 2015 tour here in the U.S. and then we took like a week and a half off, two weeks off before we went to Australia. And the whole time we were in, in Australia, I was trying to get Dame. Never went to Australia. Dame was never on the tour, and. Um, when we went to Australia, that's when I knew that the problems were escalating for sure. Cause we had been off a tour for like a week and a half, two weeks, and Hobson still had that nigga block. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just thought that that was crazy. Um, so I was trying to mediate it in Australia, but it was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of miscommunication, a lot because Hobson and Dane weren't talking, so they weren't getting on the same page, and we were, we all kind of had to work with Dame to make things successful, and it just made it a, a very frustrating situation. So, Funk Volume essentially closes up shop. Yeah. Uh, you end up going with Dame. Yeah. Why? Because I never had no problems with Dame. Um, I always got the que all the questions that needed to be answered always got answered for me. Um, and I wasn't in business with Dame. You know, and Hobson was, it's different, it's a lot different. I was an artist on the label, and I kicked back to the label, an independent label. So I was cool with that. I was cool with this label getting what they getting from me because I'm kicking back to something that can't nobody take away from us, I thought. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. Well, Dane was getting a lot of criticism, and you know, especially with what Hobson was putting out there. Do you think that that was a fair criticism or no? Fair criticism? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was fair or not. You know what I mean? I don't like the way that Hobson handled the shit at all. Um, and no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think it was fair criticism. I think, uh, I think the fans jumped the gun for sure. <laughs> I seen some crazy, I seen some crazy shit about Dame, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, damn, they, they coming for Dame's neck. <laughs> but um, I don't think it was fair, but I think it taught Dame a lesson um, on how to be as transparent as possible when it comes to business. And if somebody don't understand something, you should probably try to make them understand it before you continue to move forward. And um, I think that Hobson learned a lesson too about being able to articulate himself a little better and um, paying attention to the shit that comes across his table. And uh, so it, it was a learning lesson for everybody. Right, because I think that 
it ended up being like a lawsuit of some sort that Dame and Hobson had to go through. Yeah, because I mean, the label was dismantling. You know what I mean? The label fucking. There's no more label, so they got to figure out how to go their separate ways. Okay, so what ultimately happened with the body of work? Did did they both own it at the end, or or what happened? No, Hobson left with his masters, and then Dame. And we, we had to deal with Dame and all the rest of the shit. Okay, so Dame basically took control of all the other artists' uh, masters. Yeah, Hobson didn't want no parts of none of that. Really, because he, I mean, he was a co-owner of the label. I mean. That's like leaving death row and only taking your own stuff. I mean, you kind of want everything from the, the whole label, don't you? I don't know.